Worried. Jeez. Cyclops is the leader of the X-Men, and is often known as Professor X's golden boy. For a while in the comics he could do no wrong, but often as a leader it falls to you to make tough decisions. Today we are going to talk about some of those more questionable and criticized decisions as we count down the top 10 worst things Cyclops has ever done. Welcome back Nerd Squad, I'm your host Amanda McKnight aka Cyclops today or Sarah Summers if you like. I have done uh, some not so great things, it's true, but please do not judge me too hard. You know it's hard being the leader and having everyone sort of look to you. And before we dive in, a big thank you to this video sponsor, Loot Crate. Thank you so much, Loot Crate. If you love fandoms and you love having all the swag to decorate your space and celebrate your fandom, Loot Crate is where it's at. With Loot Crate, you get a monthly subscription box and have cool fandom merch delivered right to your door. They have all your favorite fandoms like Marvel, Disney, Rick and Morty, Pixar. This time around, I received an X-Men box. Inside, I found everything you would need to create the ultimate tiki at home setting. I can set the mood with this awesome new Lockheed tea candle holder, make myself a cool beverage in my tiki sentinel mug, and and get cozy in this awesome mutant party beach shirt to evoke the feeling of the Green Lagoon, Tiki Bar, or Krakoan beach party. Loot Crate is flexible too. You can even change between fandoms on a monthly basis and can cancel or skip a month at any time. To get your Loot Crate today, go to the link in the description and be sure to use code TOPNERD15 for 15% off. Thank you so much to Loot Crate for sponsoring this video. All right, now that I'm cozy and ready for a tiki party, let's get counting. Number 10, didn't have his priorities straight. I won't deny when I originally wanted to come back to the X-Men, I was more focused on running away. I was behaving recklessly as a result, and eventually it got so bad that the rest of the X-Men called me on it. Embarrassing. Storm ended up challenging me for leadership, and she kicked my butt too, unsurprisingly. I might be a great tactician and a master of trigonometry, but you know, these laser eyes that are really portals to another dimension filled with limitless energy, apparently, have nothing on what my teammate Aurora is capable of. And so I was unable to leave and forced to return to my family with a lot of my fellow mutants judging me for trying to shirk my responsibilities to my wife and child. Number nine, blasted Wolverine because he dropped a truth bomb. Some might see it that way anyways. I, however, feel like Logan was being very insensitive and disrespectful respectful to Emma and I at the time. Wolverine basically saw Emma Frost and I together following one of Jean's many deaths and harshly judged me. What part of the mourning process is this, he asked us. First of all, he barged in on us, then he started accusing me of not mourning properly? Did I overreact by optic blasting him out of a window? Maybe. I don't know why Logan always has to goad me though. Why can't we just have a calm, reasonable discussion about our feelings? It's almost like he wants me to fight him. Number eight, reestablish the X-Force. The X-Force is basically a mutant team for when there are missions that don't really fall on brand for the X-Men. Until we had the Hellions, they were kind of like our mutant suicide squad, except mostly made up of heroes instead of villains. But the these were heroes who weren't afraid of killing when needed. The heroes who were more edgy than the rest of us. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge fan of the X-Force really, but I can recognize when the team is necessary and I know when we need to use them and when it's time to bring that kill squad back together. Unfortunately, not everyone agreed with me. Some questioned my motives while others have been known to judge me for ordering other mutants to kill while keeping my own hands clean of these deeds. Although in my opinion, ordering someone to kill makes me just as responsible, and it still greatly weighs on my own conscience, which I think is what many people forget. Number seven, used young mutants as weapons. That's a harsh way of putting it. Professor X did a similar thing with all of us, and I guess a part of me was emulating him in a way. Although at least I didn't use a mutant to train other mutants and tell people it was just a danger room as opposed to a sentient being. But anyways, this became a huge controversy when I suggested that new mutant Oya do what she felt was right when faced with a hard decision. Poor Oya was only 14 years old, and she already felt terrible about the accidental deaths she'd caused when her powers first manifested. So the wording I used there was poor in terms of 
providing guidance. I truly believed we were almost out of time and Oya was our only hope, despite Wolverine's pleas that he could still make it in time. As a result, Oya killed members of the Hellfire Club and everyone labeled me as someone who molded our young recruits into ruthless killers and dangerous weapons. Number 6. Exploited X-23 When we originally took Laura Kinney in, I wanted to utilize her, but Wolverine disagreed with me. We needed to get the X-Force back together. I needed that team. I went to Wolverine and explained why and he was all for it. Although he did mention the fact that I was keeping it from Emma, which yes, I'm not proud of. We needed to come up with a roster as the team had disbanded. Now, I suggested X-23. Laura Kinney had been trained as a killer and she was highly skilled. She was perfect. But Wolverine felt differently, that she didn't have the life experience to make that choice if offered. I probably should have talked to Wolverine earlier about it, but I'd already offered Laura the spot and she'd accepted. I wanted to utilize her, but Wolverine saw it as me using her. Number 5. Cheated on Jean Grey So originally I was personally all about Jean Grey. She was perfect for me I thought, but I don't know. Even I have come to see that Emma, you know, might actually be a better fit for me in the long run. Still, with that being said, it was pretty terrible how that whole thing started. Emma and I were having a psychic affair behind Jean's back. What's worse, I also may have had Emma dress up and emulate Jean within our minds. I mean, she was more the one who offered that, but still, she she even changed her hair color. Yeah, it was not good. And what's worse, I knew it was wrong, and yet I still went along with it. Eventually, Jean found out, telepathically walking in on Emma and I together. Definitely not a moment I'm proud of. Number four, almost made the squirrels extinct. This one made the cut? Really? I feel like I was at least a little justified here, but. But I guess I could see how this might seem pretty bad, especially as, yes, not all scrolls are evil. During Secret Invasion, however, I was desperate. I wasn't sure we'd make it, and so I had to take some pretty severe action there. The plan I came up with was to use the legacy virus as a template to create basically a scroll version of that virus, a version that targeted and wiped out scrolls. Now, this worked well, but maybe a, a little too well, as the scroll alien race was then kind of at great risk overall because of the virus, which, yeah. I feel kind of bad about that part. Number 3. Made out on Jean's grave I mean, this whole storyline was really a strange one. This happened because Jean's psychic ghost told me that it was okay and basically gave Emma and I her blessing after she died. Jean had apparently learned of an alternate future where everything went haywire because I wasn't fit to lead the X-Men and hoped that me finding happiness would be a good way to prevent this from coming about. Emma and I could have been a little more tasteful though perhaps when it came to the location in which we chose to express our feelings for one another. In retrospect, uh, Jean's grave was probably not a good place for a makeout session. Number two, killed Professor X. Wow, okay, how can you really blame me for this one? I wasn't even myself at the time, must I remind you? So basically what had happened at this point was the Phoenix Force had returned to Earth during Avengers vs. X-Men, it had taken hold of five of us after Tony Stark split it up, divided the power was manageable to hold on to, but it also made it easier for the Avengers to defeat us. Slowly, those who were part of the Phoenix Five were defeated and fell away. I was one of the last last people to hold on to the power, which meant, yeah, I kind of flew off the handle, and yeah, I kind of stole that last power from Emma Frost. The professor tried to talk me down, and I just was not having it, so I kind of, I took that power, and I sort of, I killed him. But afterward, I felt really bad about the whole thing, and even agreed that I needed to be basically put under arrest for my crimes. I didn't feel good about that one either, although some may have believed that Professor X had it coming. Number one, abandon his family. Okay, this is probably in retrospect one of the worst things I've done in the comics. After Jean died, I, I never thought I'd love again until I met Madeline Pryor. Maddie was something else, and what's more, she weirdly resembled Jean. Like, we're talking almost identical. For a while, I thought she actually might be the reincarnation of Jean's soul, but then I thought, nah, that's silly. She probably has no relation to Jean whatsoever. We got married, had a son together, everything was going great, then Jean came back from the dead. Or she wasn't really ever dead? Anyways, it's all very confusing. Either way, she was back, that was all that mattered. So I returned to the X-Men, which kind of meant abandoning my wife and son in Alaska. Yeah. Maddie didn't take it too great, especially after she learned she was actually a clone of Jean Grey made by Mr. Sinister for the sole purpose of mating with me. She got pretty evil and ensorcelled my brother to boot, and my leaving was a big motivation for her transformation from innocent bystander to evil sorceress whose powers mirrored and were on a similar scale to Jean's. Thank you so much for watching Nerd Squad, and thank you again to Loot Crate for sponsoring this video. What do you think are some of the worst things that Cyclops has done? And be honest, you think that Wolverine has done worse things than me, right? 
right? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. While you're on your way down there, be sure to check out our offer code from Loot Crate and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed our list. Till next time, this is Top 10 Nerd and I'm Amanda McKnight, aka Sarah Summers, aka Cyclops, reminding you as always to stay nerdy, YouTube.